So, hi everybody. My name is Attila Marashi and I work for Sophos. This is my first uh, confidence conference, but I like it so much. Thank you to having me. So, in this presentation, I would like to change my hat. I work for a security company, but I would like to not um, represent, but thinking with, with a criminal mind and, and find uh, the solution and the way how how can operate. So, if I were a criminal, I'm, I would be a lazy one. I don't want to work so much, but I want good money. That's the purpose to choose this way of working. And um, what I have to keep in, in my mind that uh, to keep this business running, I have to hide my ass, uh, keep my um, identity hide and um, uh, fly under the radar. So I need a solution to, to keep this business running and also I don't want to waste too much energy and time to develop solutions and, and things because I'm, I'm lazy. So a couple of stories, what, uh, what could be good to learn about it and criminals also uh, checking the news and other criminals which could be a good way, a good solution to, to steal with each other and to learn about it. So, a couple of years back, there was the Karna project. It was not uh, uh, a criminal one, but uh, a very um, interesting one. When researchers create uh, um, a worm to, to find uh, open devices all around the internet, and modify them through a uh, telnet connection and uh, the, the possibility it provides them and add new features to the open devices to be able to scan the whole internet within a very short time. I think the, the final result was 20 minutes, which was very good time on, on, on yeah, it was a very good result on that time. So um, it was a, it was a, a project when, when researchers, criminals could use low-hanging fruits, open devices all around the net. So they are just listening, waiting for you. And um, they had the capabilities to, to add some features to, to serve you in a way you would like. And as you can see, there are researchers and criminals who like it and take it uh, uh, this way. So, um, a more recent one, the Mirai botnet, uh, which was also an IoT stuff and uh, also very interesting. They, uh, they build a very strong uh, network using very cheap and creepy devices and, and creating a very, very powerful uh, botnet. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's, I fed up. So, what's the problem in, in my perspective? That these projects are too, too mess, too complex for me. It has to uh, develop a control server, you have to create, uh, um, you have to organize them, you have to create some business solutions, because if you have many devices, you can control, okay, how, how, how make money? how I can turn into to money. It's, it's difficult. So building botnets, um, it's not, not as easy. Uh, so I, I need a more easy way to, to, to earn good money. So, and, and my vision is that, that I would like to work a couple of days and um, $2 million will be enough for me. It's a, it's a good rate. As you will see, it's, it's worked. So, my first lucky vendor, I, I just cover it not to be too, too rude. So, it uh, provides gadgets to build uh, SCADA systems or, or things you would like to. Um, you can join together and it provides you um, a very easy way to control them and to create uh, very complex systems, as you will see. So you just buy these things and build together. For example, there is a vendor who um, creates this uh, product, the night shift, when you can add this little 
gadgets to the to the lamp and you can control with the lamps with with one one control uh, gadget and you can turn the light uh, as you would like to you can add sensors to it to track the the um, the night moves for example someone walking on the road and uh, the lights um, is just halfly used and when someone reached the dedicated lamps the the light is more uh, powerful so you can you can decrease the energy you waste for example in an empty street or whatever you would like to so if you use senses you and you know that how the open um, open page looks like you can find uh, easily a uh, couple of key devices which are listening on the internet uh, if um, the guys or the vendor who uh, apply and install the device does not change the the device and using uh, default settings the device is fully open and if you open the uh, uh, the IP address you can get the full dashboard and you can control the device so as you can see this is one of uh, one lucky uh, IP address I, I just checked and uh, as you can see the the magic is that it has a Python uh, uh, framework on the on the little gadget and you just write some script to control the whole system so if you are able to write Python scripts you can control these devices and um, there is a file configuration and the Python 5 uh, menu where you can upload your script and you can take over the device um, yeah so as you can see there were a couple of uh, guys who trying just uh, the script language was not proper because it was a PHP but as you as you can see it could be uh, easily controlled and because it has a mobile uh, stuff and the mobile stuff has uh, cell IDs and cell informations you easily find the device uh, with these informations so for example uh, this lucky one was somewhere here uh, the cell information is not very very uh, accurate but it's uh, if you have the control over the device just turn off and on off and on and you can find it very easily so the next uh, the next one is the dedicated micro uh, which is a, which is a vendor who provides big systems for stadium for for big place to control with uh, with cameras and to aggregate all the records into a into a big box and provide some historical records for for security purpose so again if you know the banner you can search it and you will find that there are two type of dedicated micro stuff one requires a username that not use the the default settings and uh, below is the the default settings where you got a prompt immediately if you filled um, uh, just for the open device you will see that roughly one key device is listening and waiting for you so <coughs> what we what you get if you open a device with a tyrant whatever you would like to you can change the device as you can as you would like to the data of it but what if if you open it with FTP as you can see then there are some backdoors already uploaded because if you open the device with default credential you have write access on the device with anonymous access there is the more minor C that was the biggest part of my presentation this is my favorite and as you can see the web interface also listed there so you can change the web dashboard you can upload any files and uh, update it so you can change the firmware of the device through the FTP with anonymous login brilliant so as you can see um, roughly 20% of the device used be the default credential and 90% um, already infected with more minor C 
but um, yeah and I have a third lucky vendor is the Seagate um, which is a NOS in this situation this is a this is a NAS which has a design flow the problem is that with with the with the dashboard you can you are able to create users users with password so um, the users with username and password can reach their own folders so you could think that I have a protected folder I can offer uh, my devices to the internet because my folder is can be reached by my username and password but the problem is that uh, there is a default public folder with the uh, anonymous access which you are not able to turn off so if you put the device to the internet uh, there will be one uh, account which um, will be available on the internet for anyone and this is the public folder so with this if you put the device and as you can see roughly 400 devices on the internet is listed and uh, listening currently means that you have roughly 800 terabytes free cloud you can use it because there is no restriction and the smallest device is two terabytes so that's the that's the amount of space you you have and if you log in to the device you will see that the more minor c is also there uh, roughly all of the uh, all of the cg devices listed and uh, have this malware already so what is more minor c oh, so sorry so more minor c is a is a mining uh, uh, malware <coughs> a couple of years back uh, minor application and malware was very very uh, public story um, but these malwares uh, um, tries to uh, mine Bitcoin and uh, currently the difficulty of the Bitcoin is too high to uh, verse to mine uh, Bitcoin on, on ordinary PCs so there are dedicated devices and uh, stuff to to make it uh, Bitcoin but Monero is a is a new stuff it's as you can see um, released and created in in 2014 uh, and uh, it has very good things that the difficulty is very low so a normal PC can earn and can produce uh, Monero for you if you have a GPU uh, a video card on it uh, it could be more efficient and it's a cryptocurrency so it uh, provides more privacy uh, protections for the users of it so it's a very good choice for for uh, criminals and um, it brings a new um, golden era for for miners um, there are new variant of um, not wanna cry but the exploit behind the wanna cry uh, is used by by uh, new miner sorry new miners uh, to to spreading in a way that uh, wanna cry do so <coughs> how it looks like this malware I think um, was created within a couple of days maximum um, it's a ANSYS application I think um, all of you already used ANSYS not created but used because it's very popular for in installing applications it's a script language where you can list the the things you would like to perform when when you for example install something creating folders copying stuff downloads things from the from the internet it's a it's a very a very uh, easy language to to use in more minor there are a couple of files which brings with the uh, with the dropper uh, there are stuff components so the developer of the mover um, have no efforts on on this these are co um, community stuff so there is no developer cost on or cost on it so the only thing you had to do uh, is just creating the droppers and start it on a on a user machine uh, the tricky part is the icon of the application is a folder uh, icon so if uh, someone who used the windows machine with default settings when the known uh, extensions are hide you will see just the 
the file which names uh, image. So if you would like to see the content of the folder, you will double click on it. And as you can see, many users were mislead with, with this very old and, and mm, quirky, quirky stuff. Not all the, not all instance, but a couple of uh, has an additional file, the tftp uh, exe, which just uh, caring about the, the spreading process when just generating a random IP address tries to log in with uh, anonymous users and place a call, place an instance to the to the uh, to the device which was just reached. So how it looks like if there is a some it, if there is a infected machines it's just generating the random IP address it find uh, for example uh, an open FTP uh, Seagate or or something just copying uh, instance of the of the FTP inside the network uh, someone just click on it because they would like to know that what images uh, folder uh, contents and just start it. Um, if you launch it, it just tries to copy uh, one instance to all map, uh, map it uh, folder, uh, what, the, what the PC knows. So if there is other uh, network attached folders, uh, it, will, it will spread all over the network. But it's also a couple of lines on, on ANSYS. So it's a very, um, very dummy spreading process but it works very, very good, very well. So after uh, the, the application was launched, it just retrieved this file, decrypted it, and these are the, the hashes, what uh, the mining is uh, counted. So if you start a, a miner, you always have to provide a, a wallet, a hash, and your production, your effort will be counted uh, uh, with this hash. So if you know this hash, uh, you can control the, the effort and the value what was produced by the malware. So let's speak about the money. So we have the hashes uh, and we are very lucky because the, the threat actor used the Monero pool and if you have the hashes, Monero pool will brings you and give you the, the results of the of the efforts, the, the results of the hash. So if we, as you can see that you just provide the hash and you will get that how much money was paid for, for the criminals and how, f how strong the, the network behind the hashes, how much uh, hash could be, could be counted uh, per sec. So if you collect all the hashes, you will be able to generate all the information, get all the information that how much money was paid for the criminals and how powerful the network they have. It's a unique uh, case for us. Um, there were no case like, like this when we have so exact information about how much money uh, can produce with, with this stuff. So according to uh, the, the gathered information, the, <coughs> the network is, has uh, uh, nine key uh, kilo hash uh, per sec, which means that um, they can produce roughly a million dollars per year with this, which is not bad as a monthly salary, also, also something good. <laughs> so, um, this threat is roughly one and a half year old, mm, mostly untouched. So someone just write it and start it and let it go. That's, that's good. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, the money they can earn uh, is 200 uh, to the $3 million without any effort, just collecting the stuff and letting to, to spread. So after that, we just uh, thinking that, okay, if FTP has such a value or, or something, we, we thought that we can forget it, but no, uh, there are malwares which are, which are spreading through uh, 
through FTP and, and using this way. So we should know then how much IP address and how much devices could be involved and how, how difficult um, how big is the problem? So we we created a test, uh, download the, the initial data from census that um, how much FTP service listening all over the world, creating a test case about uh, how could we check that how many open uh, in, a, in a bright access way. So just open it, log in to log in with anonymous access and tries to uh, write something on it to check it uh, is is it open or not and and mm, at least uh, the result so that was the process i i do that check all over the the ip addresses but i fed up very very soon so um i just i just developed a, a framework because uh, this uh, 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 to test a bunch of IP address in, in some way is something we frequently needed. So we needed a, a system to be able to, to check uh, um, a blob of IP addresses. So that's uh, the scanner framework when we can uh, uh, pop up a question that, okay, give me the IP address which related with FTP. That's my test case in, in a Python uh, file with just a couple of lines and do the test and check it and bring the the results to me so the result uh so sorry the the initial data um, all around the internet there is there are you know, 12 million ip addresses which related with ftp we we didn't want to test all of them so we just test uh, three and a half million which is it's a representative so the result the result um 91 percent is restricted so you can log in to the ftp if you know um, at least one mm, right uh, credential username and password there are nine percent where anonymous user can log in which is not bad if you just log in retrieve stuff it's very good way to re distribute some public stuff but there is for the uh, zero dot four person where you have the right access on the device how how many is it so as you can see uh, all over the internet we currently we have uh, 10 key ip addresses where you have the possibility to to just copy something there and, uh, and let it spread and or just use it as a as a free cloud and there are so many devices which contains and and repeatedly have new encrypted files and no one knows that what these are files so if you would like to store something just copy over 10 key ftp server maybe there will be one alive after a day or a month so it will be a good good place to to store data and uh, tracking who, if you would like to communicate and you would like to uh, just put something there and in an other way, just grab it, it's very difficult to find how the, the data transferred. <coughs> so if you use this uh, ration for the 12 million, that means that uh, 40 key IP addresses all over the world and 40 key uh, FTP server just waiting for you to to store something and yeah i know there are a couple of honeypots but maybe it's a little more so um okay there are 40 keys uh, which can be right um, we check the files what are listed on the uh, on the ftp servers where anyone has write access uh, what kind of files are are there and 70% uh, already infected with uh, with one at least one malware the more minor C and 23% uh, 23 have the have some files which related to some test or hack or 
content there are many scanners with just placing PHP and FTP, uh, HTML files and then they just tries to grab it and check that the FTP folder and the uh, the, the service Apache endings or anything which serves the the web part is connected um, with because it's uh, provide them a more more possibility so only nine percent which is uh, not touched or mm, didn't have the symptoms but I think it's just a matter of time to to know it uh, or to to uh, to reach it by by some some criminal and and use it for for that purpose so final thoughts um, as you can see um, two million dollars and more than two million dollars could be could be earned with these lazy lazy ways that um, the movers for example wanna cry is is very very fancy and um, but if you check uh, how much money they earn um, it's not reach that part and it's much sophisticated they they cause very big harm and damage but the money they can earn with it is far more or less uh, so uh, some lazy stuff could be much more efficient than than this uh, very noisy one and um, as you can see that these these are the these are the the lazy movers but what if it's uh, this strategy uh, used um, uh, and uh, criminals use more effort to use this way it could be much much uh, difficult and um, as as usual uh, this small work um, would have stopped and blocked uh, by very very basic security prevention and and uh, then things like uh, like some uh, security products or just using the right settings with uh, with uh, FTP to to stop the, the spreading process questions if have any no. uh, I've seen uh, you've been scanning IP addresses uh, of US uh, citizens uh, or companies uh, aren't you fear of being prosecuted no Okay. <laughs> <laughs> was there any uh, attempt to try to figure out who is behind this? Like, was there any uh, attempt to withdraw money or transfer any of those uh, um, coins that were mined by this malware that you are aware of? In Monero, uh, there is no chance to, to track uh, how, how the money goes. Uh, the stuff they used, uh, as you saw that there was a Russian uh, site which produce, well, which uh, provide uh, the the hashes, the the wallet uh, data, and, um, and other stuff. Um, these are these are Russian stuff, but uh, this, this could be just because uh, um, that that parts of the world could be good place to to be high but it's it doesn't mean that they are Russian uh, okay uh, I couldn't get it at the start of the presentation is this uh, one kind of IP camera that is infected or uh, what so which one what, what is infected with this malware like is this one kind of device or this malware is spreading through FTP, so all the device which has FTP and lets anyone to, to log in and, uh, and place something there could be involved. Uh, one which was uh, uh, spotted uh, by us was the, the dedicated micro. Uh, but it's, it doesn't mean that they are infected, they're hosting the mother 
Um, so in here, the, the dedicated micro hosting this, this mover, the instance of the mover, and if someone um, open it and, and, for example, attach the, the, the folder to a Windows PC and double click on it, so launch it, uh, which is, it needs many steps and you think that, okay, no one will map it and double click and there is no product would block it or something. But as you can see, there are enough, enough machines and key user who double click on it and, and let it run. And the network is, yeah, uh, the network is still growing. It's uh, the most, I, I think all the, all the, uh, antivirus companies who worth to mention have identities for this uh, malware more than a year or, or more. So, but it's still growing and still the network is, is just, just growing. So there are keen users. Does this malware require administrative privileges to run or? No. It's just running and then calculating numbers and that's, that's the way how, sorry, how they uh, produce the money. So it's not stealing something, just the power of your, of your machines. And how does it send these hashes to the, to the network? network. Yeah, but through FTP or through uh, HTTP? No, it's TCP connection port. I don't know what is the default, but I think, yeah, through so ECFC, as you can see. Uh, okay. So if you have the possibilities to communicate uh, with, uh, with um, uh, the mining pool, uh, it will send, it will get the, the the blob information which has to be calculated and after the calculation it will send back and the, mo uh, the pool will count that okay thank you for your job it's worth for us uh, some money and that's that's how the, the money creates 